and understand, if you will, the program that I chaired last year. I, sp I, I spent my own time down in D.C. chairing the National Research Program in Weedy and Invasive Organisms was eliminated four months ago. The 406 funds that fund weed science and integrated pest management research were eliminated about a month ago. There is no public sector funding, or very limited. There's a critical issues program that was recently established, but is not going near far enough to address the kinds of things we've been discussing today. And, uh, and I am confident and certain that it will not be done by the companies. And, and I would be, if I may, um, if, unless we take with the research the opportunity to extend that information to the growers, because research without information and transmittal of information is of no value. So right. extension is, is also a very important component. I, th I, thank, I thank the gentleman. Uh, we're going to, uh, uh, Ms. Kaptur has uh, kindly yielded to Mr. Foster. Uh, you, are you recognized? Um, well, thank you so much. And I, I apologize. I may have to jump out for votes in a different committee. Um, the, let's see. My first question, um, is it unambiguous? Is the biochemical mechanism for the, the glyphosate resistance in the super weeds um, identical or different from the mechanism in the GM traits? And, and is there any, any, um, any ambiguity about whether or not this thing could have been, the gene could have jumped? Or is it absolutely clear to everyone that the gene did not jump? I, I, what, one of the, to me, a, a really important distinction is that we've got a herbicide that we basically can use in just, well, certainly in Midwest year after year now, because we've got, unlike the case where you could use atrazine in corn and you had resistance in weeds in corn, you go to soybeans and you don't use atrazine and you're not selecting for the weed population year in and, and year out. The thing that's unique about this is that we, we're using this compound a lot, and there are more registrations that are in, in review right now for, for other crops to be added where the same active ingredient it can be used on you know, okay. a number well, of let me interrupt crops. Then. That's my, an important And, and I agree. My question would be this then. Um, would you agree that, the, that, that, um, that if it's being done year after year after year, with the same crop year after year after year, um, that that would be uh, contradictory to uh, the EPA label found on the product uh, and best practices uh, for crop rotation and weed management? I would agree that that would not be a good thing. Truthfully, any, any practice that is repeated recurrently, whether it be tillage or no tillage, or herbicide, and we have history where we used the same mechanism of action on both crops, corn and soybean, in the 80s with the ALS inhibitors. But anything that you do recurrently is going to cause a shift in the weed population to allow something that doesn't respond to whatever it is that you're doing to become the dominant feature of a, of a particular crop field. Well, Professor Mortensen, um, well, first let me say this. I, I think. What I was trying, and I, the point that I made in my opening statement was um, that it makes sense for farmers to do what's right, obviously, uh, to uh, invoke best practices, to follow uh, the EPA prescribed uh, guidelines on uh, the chemicals that are being used vis-a-vis uh, -vis the crops that are being planted, uh, and that r really, uh, by and large, this problem can be mitigated uh, through a proper farming techniques. Uh, now, as I mentioned, we have bad actors. We have people who don't follow it. And as a result, 0.08% uh, of our world's farm ground uh, is being affected by uh, so-called super weeds or herbicide-resistant weeds. Now, I'm not suggesting that 0.08% of farm ground is insignificant, but what I am suggesting is that some of the prescriptions for the cure, I would argue, are worse than the disease itself. And I want to focus on um, your recommendations, Mr. Mortensen. Uh, specifically, um, I've read your five recommendations, and number three uh, suggests that the government should ensure farm-level herbicide management planning. How does the government ensure farm-level herbicide management planning? The, um, 
there would be actually several ways that it could be done. I mean, right now, the, the uh, BT is regulated at the farm level, which is for insect resistance management. We could easily imagine um, a case where, um, where the amount of glyphosate, for example, that is sold for a certain number of acres that a farmer is farming would be something that you would keep track of and not have somebody have enough of the glyphosate that it's going to be used on the entire farm. You could require, as is the case with CAFO requirements for water quality insurance in my own state, where there are dairy farms where you're concerned about water quality issues. We have rules where farmers have to have a, uh, a water quality soil management plan in place. I don't see any reason why we couldn't have a pest management plan in place at the farm level. Well, uh, the chairman has uh, uh, very politely informed me that my time has expired. Well, I wish I had more round. time. Uh, all I would say uh, now that my time has expired is that I think that um, uh, it would be much f far more effective for us to um, promote education uh, as the form of, of encouragement to farmers to prohibit this as opposed to additional regulation and, and uh, government involvement. I yield back. I, I thank the gentleman. We are going to have another round and uh, you'd be welcome to participate. And the chair recognizes Mr. Kaptur. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much for holding this extremely important hearing. And I wish to place on the record with unanimous consent an article, if it has not been placed on the record by other members, that was in the New York Times on May 4th entitled The Rise of the Superweeds. Without objection. Thank you. And I'll just read one statement from Andrew Wargo, the third the president of the Arkansas Association of Conservation Districts, who states uh, that the um, impact of these genetically resistant weeds is the single largest threat to production agriculture that we've ever seen. Now that's interesting for someone from the state of Arkansas, but the article goes on and it mentions many of the concerns we've been talking about here today. Let me just state for the record that I have legislation that I would also like to um, place on the record here, H.R. 3299, I've reintroduced in this Congress, called the Seed Saver Legislation uh, to allow farmers to save their seeds and to uh, actually pay royalties to the Department of Agriculture at levels that they assess, not to the seed companies. And um, incredible concentration in the seed market has priced many of our farmers out of the market and given seed companies, not the seed dealers, unnatural control over who holds the um, power of life. While this is not the primary purpose of this hearing, Mr. Chairman, I would like some of the panelists to um, uh, comment uh, here on the incredible concentration of the seed market and the market manipulating actions of these companies. And I wanted to ask Mr. Rausch if, in fact, um, he has to pay technology fees uh, when you purchase your seeds. And also, uh, do you have the ability to harvest the seeds that you purchase? I think you mean do I have the ability to retain or keep the seeds? Yes. That, no, I do not. Um, I don't think most members of Congress really understand this. I don't think they understand the issue at all. The Supreme Court has usurped the law of the land, which is the Plant Variety Protection Act, and I'll leave it at that. Um, I wanted to uh, mention in terms of uh, Mr. Kimball's testimony that APHIS funding levels in the recent 2011 budget um, provide an additional $6 million to assess the risks of genetically modified organisms for the biotechnology regulatory services. Um, the uh, budget provides about $19 million for the overall uh, services there within APHIS uh, to, to assess the risks of forthcoming genetically modified organisms. This is an increase uh, compared to the prior year. And I'm wondering if you are stating that that is not sufficient. I just want to understand what you're saying about the budgetary levels of USDA. Yes, if, if I may, um, I, I cannot resist um, commenting on, on the first thing you brought up. It is true right now that Monsanto owns 25 percent of the world's commercial seeds. Uh, together with uh, Syngenta, Bayer, Dow, and DuPont, they own almost 50 percent of all the world's uh, commercial seeds. Uh, we have seen a massive and a significant rise in the cost of corn. And if the gentleman would yield, I don't think the American people really understand that the seeds of life are now controlled by chemical companies. 
Yes, and and they I and I start. think that the, the 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 manner in which that they they control them is through acquisition of seed companies, through patenting of those seeds, through genetic engineering of those seeds, and through potentially the something called terminator technology, which would be a technology which has the seeds basically infertile after one growing season. So you know we are facing a cri I think a hidden crisis in in seed diversity uh, that uh, if we are letting just a few chemical companies decide which seeds on the earth are going to be available to farmers, which are not. Uh, I think we're, you know, if this were water or oil, I think we'd be, in a, we'd realize the crisis we're in. So I just want to, uh, you know, undergird what you're saying. I think it's terribly important. And I, if I've you have not recommendations, or Mr. Roush, on what we might do about that through your organizations, I hope you'll get back to us on that. Yes. Well, thank you. And 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 as far as far as you know, it, to me the problem, and I and I, I really should, you know, I, I can get back to the, you know, the subcommittee on this. To me, the problem with appropriations is not as important as the problem of exactly who the agency seems to be serving. And uh, having witnessed these five litigations, all lost by APHIS, having looked at the IG and the GAO report and the Farm Bill, it seems to me that, that the USDA, now in this administration as well, but certainly the last administration, is bending over backwards to find excuses not to do an environmental impact statement, excuses not to look at the economic harm, not to look at, the, and, and to this day refusing even to look at the issue which is the central issue of this hearing. Uh, and so regardless of if, they're spending, if they have the money and they're not spending it actually doing the work they have to do, uh, you know, it seems to me that is the problem. Whether that is actually adequate to do that job, somebody else would have to, to, you know, to say. But again, I want to reemphasize and say here, I certainly do not like to see the agency relying solely on the information being given by the companies. And I would certainly think that one way to, to, to spend that money would be to get independent university researchers like some of the people on this panel to really look at the emergence of these superweeds and give us the kind of information that we need and then okay, put that in the environmental impact statements. I clear on that. I know my time has expired, Mr. Chairman, but I do want to ask Mr. Roush, what fee on Roundup Ready soybeans do you have to pay per uh, acre? That's unclear. It's, it's buried in the price of the seed. It, it quite frankly depends on whether or not it's Generation 1 or Generation 2 Roundup Ready. Um, it's very unclear. Um, gentlemen, do you have a... My you estimation know, there, on I, I'm going to have to interrupt. Uh, there is a vote in progress, and uh, we're going to have to go. I, uh, I thank the gentlelady. Uh, the gentlelady's time has expired, but I'm, uh, I'm going to recess this hearing until about quarter after four, and we'll come back for the next uh, round of questions.